go one step further. How contrast those who have chronic doubt with volitional doubt? Well, the reason it's important is that there are people who choose to disbelieve. That's what I meant to say. Mm -hmm. And they will think of any excuse imaginable. Well, there's nothing you can do with people like that except to encourage them to read God's Word and to get into the God's Word because they are predisposed to not believe. And nobody can be coerced or argued into belief. That's very different from someone who's a real truth seeker who says, I don't know the truth, but I'm open to it, and I'm open to its implications. If I read the Bible and am convinced that Jesus is the Word of God and the Son of God, I will accept that even though it humbles me, even though I don't like the cross. That's a different kind of doubt. And the Christian who, who wants to believe in Christ and to trust Christ but wonders about his faith, that's very different from someone who says, I will not believe. Yeah, then go to the next one, a weak faith versus a wrong faith. Yeah, again, we're back at that very important point that needs to be made, that no matter how weak your faith is, you know, Jesus said that if you have faith like the grain of mustard, a little mustard grain, that's okay. As long as your faith is in the right person, it doesn't have to be great. But you can have all the confidence and the faith in the world in an object that cannot save you and therefore be lost forever. So we can't stress too often that it isn't the faith, it's the object of the faith that is important.